Here we have a 2021 Porsche Taycan. And this one is the base model, so it just has that one rear motor putting out 402 horsepower. Comes in the beautiful Carrera white metallic on the Bordeaux red leather interior. And just a really, really sharp car. And of course, this one gets that two-speed transmission as well which we're going to see how that feels on the test drive. But there's the front end there with your LED daytime running lights and LED headlamps. They don't flash like that. That's just the camera picking them up. But I will say, I think this is the most beautiful, well, second most beautiful EV, of course, behind the Mustang Mach-E that's on the market right now. And there we have our 20 inch aluminum wheels. Over here we have the controls for our power windows, power mirrors, power door locks with memory seats. We get a Bose sound system. And there's our power driver's seat with power lumbar and power thigh support. Love the look at those seats though. Try and squeeze back here. And the seating room actually is really good once you get in here. The hard part's getting in the seat because it's so low. But I'm 6'3 and have the seat in front of me adjusted for someone of my size. And even with this stiff back here, my knees are only barely touching this middle part because it kind of protrudes. But my headroom is actually really good. Now the rear AC vents there. There's a quick view of the front from back here. And then you have a little storage tray here and it's going to come up upside down, but you have two USB-C charging ports underneath this middle seat here. Speaking of which, to get that down, pull on this here and then you have two cup holders there. Let's check out the back. Mess that up. All right. There's the back end there, which is just absolutely beautiful. Then to pop the trunk from the back, just come up here and hit this. And there's that trunk space, which is pretty good for a Porsche. And here's a quick look at the charging cable there. That's a 240 hookup. And you even get a 12 volt back here too. Now I like how quick and seamless the trunk open and closes. And there we have our power front passenger seat with power lumbar support. Just can't get over how good this car looks. Let's go ahead and pop this front. Uh, and do that, you just go over here, tap that button there, and that'll unlock it. I don't know why I keep wanting to soft close these doors.
and there's the front space there pretty interesting you have to hit it in the vehicle and then you still have to unlock the latch from up here like a traditional hood I reckon but let's hop in the driver's seat so really nice leather wrap steering wheel here it's not plush but it's easy to handle And then over here we have our infotainment screen. So we get navigation. And then we also have our radio. So we get FM, XM, and then we get our Bluetooth audio. And then we also have Apple CarPlay as well. And there's our backup camera with the 360 view. And the guidelines are really accurate with how you turn the wheel. And I like how the camera goes when you start to turn hard to either direction, the camera turns with you to get that wider angle. So that's pretty neat. And we have our vehicle settings here. So for our drive modes, we have range, normal sport. For the chassis, normal sport, sport plus. And then for the regenerative braking or the recuperation, you can put it off, on, or on auto. And then we can toggle with the electric sports sound. I'm gonna turn that on too. But down here we have our dual zone automatic climate controls as well as three stage heated and cooled seats. And then we have a few toggles here so we can toggle the camera. We can toggle our sport mode. And then we have volume controls here and then we can shut the screen down depending on if we want to just turn the screen off or turn the whole system off and reset it. But two cup holders there. And then to open this, buttons here. And then we have a little storage, some USB ports, a 12 volt, and then a wireless charging pad there. And then there we have our huge glass roof, which is fixed. And there's a view of the back from up here. And there's our glove compartment with owner's manuals. Now to the left side of the steering wheel, we can adjust the volume. We can toggle the braking there and then Bluetooth controls there. Then to the right side of the steering wheel, we can go through our gauge cluster and then we have a back button, call button there. And it's just really, it's just a beautiful gauge cluster here and I can just pull this up, touch of a button So I like how easy that is to use. But down here we have our cruise controls. So you can toggle that and you can either have the lane keep assist on, certain other settings on too. You can adjust the speed, change the mode. Windshield wiper controls. And we have our brights and then our turn signal here. We actually toggle the lights here by touching this. And there's our push button start there. And then we can also just kind of toggle our suspension between normal sport and then sport plus. And then here's our shifter here, pull down for drive, tap up for neutral, pull all the way up for reverse, press P for park. And then here's our key fob here. And next we're gonna go ahead and take this Tycon rear wheel drive out on the road for a quick test drive.
So this rear wheel drive Taycan still feels plenty fast. And with Porsche's regenerative braking system, of course, you can have it set to just coast or you can have a light recuperation going on, but nothing like your one pedal drive vehicles like the Mach-E or any of the Teslas. But of course, I like how it drives better And for someone like myself who does a lot of does a lot of highway driving, this would be a good option just because of that two-speed transmission. So you're able to save energy when you're doing 70 or 75 down the freeway as opposed to driving another EV with a one-speed transmission. But all in all, really loving how it drives and I love the 4S as well. I'd love to drive a turbo or a turbo S, but what's great about these Tycons is they all just drive so fantastically. And it's still quick when you put your foot down. And honestly, I'm really liking the the overall feel of the Sport Plus chassis. And of course, I love the Sport Drive mode. We'll give it some throttle here from about 40. And I'm kind of, I don't know how I feel about the, the sound yet. I mean, it's cool, but I don't know if I would just leave it off. So there we have the lane keep assist and the adaptive cruise control. And the lane keep isn't a full lane centering but it'll keep you in the lines it bounces you around and it just takes me some getting used to using these cruise control buttons so you have to tap it forward to increase and then tap it back to decrease speed But even in Sport Plus, that ride down the interstate felt fantastic. But I'm gonna put it back into normal and then I'm gonna put the drive mode in the range. And you can already tell just how tame the vehicle is. When you have everything set to the calmest setting. But just a really comfortable ride. Still Steering is really nice. I like how they set that up, but I wouldn't expect anything less out of a Porsche, even an EV. And if I were to spec out a Taycan, Personally, I would go with the 4S and just make sure I have that bigger battery. But if you don't do a lot of driving, especially not a lot of highway driving, 
you'll probably be okay with the standard battery. It's still, you get 200 miles of range or 220, something like that. But personally, I just go for the, the higher one just because they're EPA rated it. What is it? Mid twos or something, but 70 mile per hour range test by, um, certain people inside EVs in particular, I think they got it at 285 or 290, just remarkable. And that's just the two speed transmission doing its thing. So even though it's not the most efficient EV, that two speed does a lot better at higher highway speeds than your typical one speed. But with the recuperation off, it just glides down it's really kind of weird because even normal vehicles don't coast like this does. It's really impressive. Like if I let my foot off the brake, I'm just cruising 28 and it's holding it. It's not decreasing any quicker than anything else I've driven. So I'm impressed by that. And that really helps with your range too. But this is going to bring me to the end of my review of the 2021 Porsche Taycan rear-wheel drive.